passwordless login. A uh, few words about myself. So this is the first time I'm giving a talk to real people, so I hope it goes well and I hope you like it. Uh, my full name is Alexandra. I often go by my shorthand Polish name, Ola. And I've been a software developer for the last 11 years. And I've spent the last uh, year and a half, two years at Callstack, which is a really great company. Maybe you've heard about the conference we're organizing in September, React Native EU. Maybe we'll see you all there. I have a pretty big household. I have two kids, uh, lots of animals. And I'm always writing at least one book all the time. Uh, and two of them got actually published. One of them is on theory of literature, and the other one is on uh, state management React Native because apparently I lead a double life. Um, thank you. You can find me on Twitter, on Blue Sky, on GitHub. Okay, um, let's dive right in. I've divided this talk into three parts. First, we'll talk about the question why you should even care about passwords. Then we'll look a little bit uh, at what are the options right now, and the solution, which are the pass keys. So first of all, why should you care about passwords? Here are three really good reasons. Hackers have published as many as 555 million stolen passwords on the dark web since 2017, and that's a statistic from three years ago. So you can imagine the number is really much bigger now. 80% of hacking incidents are caused by stolen and reused login information, and we are all guilty of it. Let's be honest, we all reuse our passwords everywhere. And the third statistic, every 39 seconds, there are hacking attacks using scripts that try to guess usernames and passwords. So how about your company and the app that you're working on? How sure are you that your app is not going to get breached? M maybe you're thinking, okay, but the app I'm working on, that's just like some small thing. Maybe um, I don't really have to care about it. I don't work for a bank, you know, whatever. But you have to remember that your users do reuse passwords everywhere, so your small app gets breached. The app is not really hurt much, right? It still works. But the passwords of your users are out, are out there on the dark web, and the hackers are really good at guessing passwords, even if your users are using maybe like password one and password two in their bank or for their email account. Hackers will just guess all of that stuff. So what is the current status? What, what are the options available to us right now? Well, the first option, of course, are passwords. The problem with passwords is that they have to be unique, but also memorable. Um, I remember I thought I was super smart where, where I, when I figured that I'm going to use like the same core password, and then the second part of my password for every website is the name of that website. And <laughs> I, I thought I was super smart. And I, and I was listening to a security podcast where a hacker was just explaining that he laughs at the face of such smart passwords. Um, so then you have email magic links, really great with security-wise. Unfortunately, we, li we live in a world where there's a lot of phishing scams, emails go to the spam folder, and users have learned not to trust their emails really that much. What else is there? We have multi-factor authentication. Really great for security, right? You have your uh, authenticator apps, your tokens, soft tokens, hard tokens, everything you, you, you want. And they are usually used in big corporations. And um, they are usually also pretty difficult to set up. And you don't want your user to get into your app and then see that they need to go through five, four different steps just to sign up and use the app, right? And then we have pass keys, which are secure, unique, and easy for the end user. So let's look a little bit more at those pass keys. When I started planning this talk, there were only uh, the Apple have published their pass key API. Since then, we have also Android Credential Manager, so that changed the shape of this app, so of this talk. Sorry. And. A fancy description of passkeys is that they give you a simple and secure way to sign in without passwords by relying on biometrics to identify when you sign in to supporting websites and apps. That sounds very fancy. Let's take a look at what the user flow actually looks like. 
So the user gets into your app, they want to, they want to sign up or sign in, they put in a username. If they don't already have an account, they are uh, presented with a question if they want to create a new account. And then they are, create, they are presented with the option to save a pass key. At this moment, uh, you, you, are, you have a, an overlay um, which tells you your username and then you click next. The, the next part is not screenshot here because the next part is just that you uh, use your biometrics on your phone. And that's it. As much as we talk about the user-facing flow. Now, let's talk about the code. So user-facing part is great for the user. They just put in a username, they put their finger on their phone or maybe they scan their face if they uh, use iPhones. Unfortunately for the developer, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. So when you use like a regular authentication flow, you get your username, your password, you send it to your server. The server does all the magic stuff and then tells you, okay, the user is logged in. In the case of pass keys, there's a little more back and forth. So we start by contacting the server, which needs to be correctly configured with this very great standard called FIDO, and I will talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, the server responds with a challenge that's a base 64 encoded string. Then, so we, we get our answer from the server, and then we do the whole passkey magic. Uh, in this code example, I'm using an open source library called React Native KeyPass. And that's pretty much this one line of code. Uh, you're calling passkey.register. At this moment in the app, your user will be presented with the overlay and they will be able to log in how it with either biometrics or with their face. Uh, we are returned from the, we, we receive uh, data that we have to pass back to our server, to another route, and to confirm that the user is logged in. So you can see that the um, number of steps is bigger than for the um, normal authentication flow. Where can we find pass keys? So there are drop-in solutions, especially for websites. I mean, for the websites, there's a whole choice of stuff. As for the mobile scene, we have Alt Zero, uh, and they are working on the on the feature to have uh, pass keys on mobile. They already have like a present. They have, they have a video presenting that you can enable pass keys in your app, but it's not available. Maybe it's available in some higher paying tiers. I'm not paying them, so I don't know. Uh, you can use open source solutions. So far, I found one, React Native Passkey. And this is a React Native uh, library that uses Apple Passkeys and credential Android Credential Manager. Or you can work out your own solution. As I've said, we have those two native um, solutions that are very well documented. So if you have the courage and the time uh, to do something new and better maybe than the existing library, then I think that would be great. A couple of things to keep in mind. I mentioned FIDO before. FIDO is an association, it's like a complicated name, I'm gonna check it. It's FIDO Alliance is an open source industry association. They set the standards for what your, um, for how secure your backend server needs to be in order to work with passkeys. Uh, they have a great website where they explain all of this in detail. And there are a lot of libraries that you can use for your for your backend to make them FIDO compliant. For example, for Node.js backends, there's FIDO2 lib uh, that you can use that will, that also has great documentation, will help you out to get your backend in shape. The second point, the setup. There are, unfortunately, additional steps for the setup. If you want passkeys to work with your app, you will need to, ha you will need to set up associated domains. Um, so that's just one more thing that developer needs to do. So these are the, the bad parts. Now the good parts is that you can use the same passkey across different devices. That's like a game changer because your user can take either the, you know a phone from whatever phone they want to take and they can log in to your app with their username and their biometrics. So that's great. They also can uh, log in into websites. I've seen flows where if you're on a computer that doesn't support 
um, fingerprinting, you're presented with a QR code, you scan the QR code, and you, you still log in using your phone. So let's take a quick look at links to demos, uh, because there are a lot of web demos out there that you can, that you can check out. You can see what the flow really looks like. Uh, Shopify includes passkeys in ShopPay, so they uh, have published a bunch of articles on the topic. And the open source library I've mentioned before, React Native Passkeys, has an example app that you also can take a look at. Uh, so I really hope I got you excited about Passkeys because I really believe they are the future, if, even if you're working on a small app or in a bigger app. We can imagine that if you're working on a bigger app, you probably have like DevOps engineers who will make sure that your database is really safe and that all the passwords are coded and encrypted and stuff like that. If you work on a small app, you probably don't have those resources. So passkeys are really a great way to make sure that all your users are safe. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.